Hello and welcome to the Startup Operator Roundup. I'm Roshan Karyapa. And I'm Gunjan Saha. And together, we break down the biggest headlines of India's growing startup ecosystem. If this is the first time you're tuning into the channel, then please consider subscribing for we talk to founders, investors, and do a roundup like this. And if you're a returning visitor, then like this video, read this episode on your favorite podcast platform, and keep sending us the good comments on social media. So, Adam Mohan, <laughs> what are we talking about? Why are we speaking like this? <laughs> okay, for those of you who haven't watched Avesham, you guys should definitely check it's it out. It's a definite killer, killer movie. must watch movie. Yeah. Shout out to Fafa. Although I don't know if he needs <laughs> yeah. any shout outs from 20,000 of us. But yeah, cool. Mm. Fantastic uh, movie. Uh, but yeah, what are we talking yeah. about today? So this week we'll be talking about India's very own GPD crew trim. Well, there's a bit of feud going on between Ola and Microsoft. And this fight, story has fight, taken fight, a fight, fight, very fight. juicy turn. So we'll yeah. be exploring that. And talking about Microsoft, Microsoft last week also held its uh, build conference. This is the... WWDC equivalent for Microsoft. We'll be doing a quick recap of that. And also Silicon Valley, there are some talks of Google planning to acquire HubSpot. HubSpot currently is valued at $31 billion. So this will probably make it Google's biggest acquisition mm. in its history. Closer home, Google is also in talks with the government. Uh, they're planning to start manufacturing drones in India and they're planning to set up a plant in Tamil Nadu. And... Uh, there are talks in the Silicon Valley where a lot of startups want to shift their domicile to India. Reverse now, flipping, they call it. Reverse flipping. Garwapsi, <laughs> I like to call it. <laughs> Swadesh movement. Uh, but this is happening because the Indian stock markets are more fa favorable to tech IPOs, it seems. Last week, GoDigit also went public and ESOP buybacks are back. Uh, it's none other than the most active company doing buyback. This is Urban Company, who had the fifth round of this program, worth wow. 203 crore rupees. Plenty of parties due from <laughs> yeah. Urban Company folks. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. So, Carrie, what happened last week? Uh, tomorrow we have the IPL finals, and well, yeah. RCB is not there. Sorry, guys, I did tell you folks that, uh, you know, I don't watch matches so that, you know, we win. But don't tell uh, me you ended up watching. Yeah, the yeah, I'm week. sorry. I bit the bullet. I just like, you know, thought that I can make an exception and I watched half the game and that was enough for <laughs> us to lose. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, fantastic comeback uh, from the uh, from the boys and uh, hopefully we pick uh, some decent bowlers for next time. Right. Congrats to Virat also. Orange mm -hmm. cap and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, and congrats to DK as well. What a man. Um, completely reinvented himself in the second half of his career and so on. Actually, so hopefully we may not have won the IPL, but the weather is back. But the weather is back, right? And Our hopefully uh, next year will be like uh, Isala Cup Namde time. That's next year. Ebo Chorto Cup Kolkata Yas. Hope springs eternal. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. We're talking about cricket, do you know in 1983 mm. when... I think it was the first time the Indian team qualified for the World Cup finals. And that time, the then BCCI president, Mr. Salve, he was mistreated by the World Cup organizers in England. He wanted extra ones. tickets for MCC and he was denied it. Mm. And that really infuriated him. And that set the foundation <laughs> for what became the BCCI we know today. It was a clash of egos. And we are seeing something like that play out today in the startup space. There's a feud between Microsoft and Bhavish uh, that started when LinkedIn deleted a post by Bhavish where he called out the West's wokeism and quote-unquote pronoun illness. Since then, uh, LinkedIn, which is owned by Microsoft, Bhavish has tweeted that, Ki, hey, you know what, I'm going to move the entire Ola cloud infrastructure onto Kruthrim cloud. And that is a big, big move. I mean, you have to think of the scale at which Ola operates. The entire Ola infrastructure now runs on Kruthrim and not only Ola, Bhavish announced that around 2,500 developers have signed up to try Kruthrim Cloud. Now, well, of course, it's, it's well known that big tech views the world from a singular lens, which is their lens. But in this, the entire context of culture, region and views of other communities get mostly ignored. From zeroing out Azure cost to building our own cloud infrastructure, Looks like the Kruthrim movement in India is really picking up steam. But do you think that can sustain? Nice segue, by the way. 
<laughs> I mean, I didn't approve of that. Uh, and I, for a second, I was wondering where this is going from, <laughs> you know, winning the cup in, in 1983 and BCCA and then Kruthrum. But uh, yeah, you pulled it off. Great stuff. Uh, look, I mean, uh, so Bavish is investing in everything, right? I mean, hmm. EI, data centers, uh, uh, chips and whatnot. Um, right? And... Uh, yeah, it makes sense for uh, him to deploy his own company on the on the infrastructure that he's building for sure, right? I mean, so there are two ways of looking at it. One is that there is a genuine grouse, uh, which I could make the case for as well. Um, or, I mean, this is just a smart marketing ploy to, you know, uh, pivot attention towards uh, what Kruthrim is uh, building, right? With their data business and whatnot, um, right? But there is a problem, you know, there is a problem with wokeism being infused into all of the technology and applications and so on that we use, right? Because technology and culture is so intrinsically linked right now, right? Um, I hate to mention uh, any pronouns and so on and so forth. I have nothing against them. It's just I don't want to be forced to mention he, him or whatever else, right? I mean, um, but I mean, look at LinkedIn, for example, right? Famously, you know, shoves that on everyone uh, else, right? Mm. Um, and this is going to get a lot more pervasive for sure, right? I mean, there are going to be technologies that will insist that we behave, speak, and do things a particular way, um, right? So And so, Bhavish is absolutely right in saying that, you know, we should opt into that uh, if we want to, uh, right? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not a fan of the whole woke moment for sure, uh, right? I mean, it's, it's a really pernicious ideology. And uh, kudos to, you know, uh, Bhavish for standing up against uh, a giant like Microsoft. And, of course, he spun it into a nice narrative, uh, on how, <laughs> you know, we should build Swadeshi, make in India, all of that stuff. And uh, hopefully it benefits uh, Kruthrim's, uh, you know, data business as well, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah, uh, overall, I mean, I think it's a it's a good story. Uh, it's a nice story. But what about Microsoft's business in India? I think a major chunk of the revenue comes from Azure. See, Microsoft, um, I, I look, I mean, they're... I, I don't know what the deal is with AWS and Azure at this point. I don't know who's leading uh, as such. Maybe AWS is ahead, right? But with with enterprises, Azure is a clear number one favorite, right? And it's a huge, huge, huge business, right? We're talking about multi-billion dollar per quarter kind of business, uh, right? So obviously, if, you, if you've spoken to folks in uh, Microsoft, as I have, uh, right, a lot of their business priorities revolve around Azure, mm -hmm. uh, right? And uh, so, I mean, they would have definitely taken note of this. But I wonder if, you know, Microsoft is so cohesive that they will do um, changes on LinkedIn because an Azure customer said so, right? I mean, it's it's very, very siloed. It's a large, large organization, uh, right? So genuinely, I don't think they can do anything about this um, as such. So uh, Bhavish has announced that around 2,500 developers as of today have agreed to move to Kruthrim Cloud. And if this gains momentum, well, definitely Microsoft, Google, and even the likes of AWS will have something to... So, Geo is about. investing a lot in uh, the data center business also, okay. right? And they have a sort of a unique proposition because they own the bandwidth, they own the data, um, and they're going to build these sort of hybrid infrastructure, uh, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so Reliance is doing on the internet side what it did on the, you know, garments and uh, other manufacturing, uh, other uh, sort of sectors they operate in, right? Complete backward integration. Uh, so starting with application to infrastructure to, mm. you know, maybe invest in chips tomorrow and so on, right? So uh, that'll be fascinating. But overall, I think this whole data center business is like fairly commoditized right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's continue with Microsoft. Last week at its annual Build Developer Conference, Microsoft introduced a host of new AI integrated services, which are targeted towards enterprise and customers. Microsoft launched the new updates for their AI service, Team Copilot, which is designed for Microsoft 365 and Teams users. It now features agenda management, note-taking, chat moderation, and contextual question answering. Microsoft also introduced Copilot Plus for PC, which is a new Windows-based hardware and powered by semiconductors from Intel, Qualcomm, and AMD. Microsoft added Phi 3 Vision, which is currently in preview, to its family of small language models, it is designed for low computing intensive tasks and can transcribe text from images. And the new generation of laptops which Microsoft will be shipping will come with an inbuilt AI that can work without being connected to the internet. 
And lastly, Qualcomm also introduced the Snapdragon Dev Kit at Build 2024, which is developed in collaboration with the tech giant. But I think the be best highlight from the event for me was the surprise, quote, surprise entry of Sam Altman. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you see Elon's tweet about uh, that Microsoft feature that it'll record everything for posterity and, yeah, yeah. you know, and so yeah. on? Uh, Elon said something like, no thanks. Or, <laughs> yeah, that's like a, a, a Black Mirror episode. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, all of this AI and everything, I mean, we talk about it every week. Uh, mm. right and the more these folks like talk about it the more doomsday it sounds <laughs> actually you know uh, I miss the times when you know it was like smart calendaring and like you know productivity and stuff like that mm. now it's like you know we're going to get so sentient we're going to like tell you what you actually want and stuff right I mean oh god um, I think <laughs> we should stop like talking about Scarlett AI for Johansson a coming and talking to you convincing you to do or not do something I'll be back guys <laughs> But uh, I think we should stop talking about AI for a while. Yeah. What do you guys think? Because there's just a lot of like you know stuff happening on that front. I think let's take a stance to not talk about AI. We'll revisit this we'll in a year. It. Let's put a pin on it. <laughs> yeah, maybe two years. All right, anyway. <laughs> well, Google has been in the news for non-AI related stuff. Uh, it is currently in talks to acquire HubSpot. Now, this could be the largest product acquisition by Google in its history. Today, the market cap of HubSpot is currently valued at $31 billion. And if this acquisition is to go through, Google will be taking the fight straight to Microsoft in the enterprise space, which has been dominated by Microsoft. Uh, we, you have been using HubSpot for a while, and uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic platform, right? Especially for marketers. Uh, but what do you think? If it comes under the Google Cloud umbrella, What's going to happen? Yeah, this could, be, uh, uh, this could be a great acquisition for both, right? Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, Google has made some phenomenal acquisitions in the past, right? I mean, YouTube, Android, Maps, and perhaps, you know, mm -hmm. dozens of others that I'm missing. Uh, they used to be really good at that. And uh, I, I don't know why, but they've just kind of slowed down on those big acquisitions, right? I mean, YouTube, they paid $1 billion, mm -hmm. right? And I, I don't know what it was. I think 2007, uh, eight not sure right uh, or, or maybe 10 i think right so um uh, they've they've kind of lagged and if you look at microsoft on the other hand right i mean they've ramped up on their uh, acquisitions and so on right linkedin at uh, 26 or 27 billion uh, open AI, again their famous investments and so on right so so perhaps i mean google has to play catch up on that front also if you look at their consumer business i feel like they've capped out on the number of users and so on right i mean it can only grow you know, they're already at a billion dollar, a billion user sort of a scale, mm -hmm. right? I mean, how much more will you grow? So right now, I mean, it's about average revenue per user and monetizing the base as such, right? Uh, so they're perhaps looking at the enterprise business, you know? Uh, again, just a comparison, Microsoft is famously enterprise and has done phenomenally well, right, in that. Um, so if you look at Google's enterprise foray, right, with Google Cloud and whatnot, that business has grown like seven, eight times. It's doing maybe 30 billion or something right now. Hmm. Uh, okay. So I, I think that is a way forward for Google. That's what they've realized, right? That, uh, look, I mean, we have to be serious enterprise folks. And HubSpot offers a fantastic opportunity for them, right? Because, you know, HubSpot, I think, is doing a couple of billion dollars in revenue valued at about 30 billion uh, right uh, if you look at really how much hubspot can grow into i mean it could become an sap or a salesforce or a workday mm -hmm. or an oracle and so on right easily okay because hubspot is not the uh, you know not the application or the company you knew about 10 years back right i mean they're not like all cute small business yeah. type of focused i mean they do have uh, obviously like a freemium version and whatnot but they're also steadily going enterprise right and it's and it's expensive now you know it's I one mean, of the most expensive yeah 25 30k easy uh, right uh, for mm -hmm. a year so that being the case, they can grow into the next Salesforce or SAP and whatnot, right? And uh, um, yeah, Salesforce, what is it at? 35 something billion in revenue, uh, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, 2 billion and 35 billion, right? I mean, there's just a heck of a lot of delta there, uh, right? So, 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 I mean, HubSpot is like a high potential sort of a, a, a foray, right? Acquisition for them. Uh, they will... 
I guess have to pay a premium, I suppose, right? HubSpot was earlier valued at their peak at about 45 billion or something, oh, wow. um, right? They're down from their peak. Um, they're not uh, making money at this point. I mean, they're as in they they do have losses, uh, losses that they're funding. Uh, and from HubSpot's perspective as well, I mean, it gives them just that peace of mind that, look, I mean, the, there is the Google cash cow, right? I mean, hmm. Google has 100 billion something in uh, reserves. So, yeah, infinite runway essentially, hmm. right? So, they can go and focus on growth and hmm. just go go and become that next uh, Salesforce or whatever without really being too tight with the person, worrying about like quarters a quarter the kind of a... A thing right which uh, they will have to uh, being a listed company so yeah i mean overall i think it's a it's a fantastic uh, but this is also not the first time that google has been in talks with hubspot for an acquisition look the yeah you bring up a good point right which is the externalities um now i don't know if an acquisition of this scale will go through okay because uh, the us regulators have been uh, very very uh, cautious about this, right? I mean, they have struck down previous uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions of this scale. Look uh, at your Google getting triggered. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> wow. Like irony in many parts. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the regulators have been uh, uh, not so kind with the, these kind of, uh, um, you know, acquisitions, large acquisitions, right? I mean, any large acquisition is at least a year or so in the making, hmm. you know? So it's going to take time. Uh, but yeah, overall, uh, a fantastic win and man, kudos to Dharmesh and uh, Brian Halligan, right? What amazing, amazing, mm -hmm. amazing founders, like seriously amazing founders. Now, you know, like building an entire category, going up against like multi-billion dollar behemoths, uh, listing a company, building a community, uh, you know, helping people with a new way to market their products and so on and then you know being acquired by you know perhaps the, the you know the top five biggest software companies in the world what a heck of a journey yeah. you know heck of a journey seriously all this in what less than 20 years yeah yeah hmm. so yeah awesome yeah. so while all of this thing is happening in the west google also has its eyes set on india Alphabet, which is Google's parent company, is set to commence drone manufacturing through its subsidiary in Tamil Nadu. Google currently offers drone delivery services to businesses across the US, Europe and Australia, utilizing a fleet of lightweight autonomous delivery drones. Now, this entire surge in drone market is spurred by an emergence of a lot of drone startups in the country. Uh, we have idea for that went public recently for a 94% premium. Dronacharya also went public in 2023 and delivery is now venturing into drone manufacturing. Other logistic players in the space is also si exploring similar routes. The cabinet also has been in favor of, mm. you know, uh, of accelerating the space. So do you think there is something for Google to gain here? Yeah, uh, for sure, right? And uh, again, kudos to Tamil Nadu. They've attracted yet another, you know, um, uh, electronic manufacturer uh, to sort of set up base there, right? I mean, they're leading, uh, you know, all these exports uh, from yeah. India. I think the fight is now coming in between Gujarat and... Tamil Gujarat, Nadu. Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing some solid competitive federalism for sure, right? I mean, uh, kudos to all of these states. Um, yeah. So, uh, Google has probably done, I think, around 350,000 something deliveries, apparently, uh, through uh, drones in Europe and elsewhere, uh, right? Uh, they have a subsidiary called Wing uh, yeah. under the alphabet uh, arm that is uh, supposedly, like, you know, leading this uh, initiative, right? Um, drones are awesome, man. Uh, and drones are going to get, like, more and more prevalent, right? I mean, I was reading one stat about, you know, this whole drone warfare and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, it takes, like some multi-million dollars to like hunt down these drones right which uh, which cost like a few tens of thousands of dollars at best yeah right or a few thousands of dollars uh so it's going to get more prevalent in uh, defense and logistics and elsewhere right um and here again 2021 i think or 2022 we had the new drone policy yeah. which had a lot of uh, uh very forward thinking regulation right i mean in terms of defining go no go zones in terms of uh, uh, drone pilot licenses and whatnot right i mean it really eased uh, uh, the way for the ecosystem i would say um, so yeah fantastic stuff uh, yeah we're going to see more drones yeah the government also announced a pli scheme of uh, 120 crore 
rupees mm-hmm. right so of course the government is putting in money in this space as well okay i think we have spoken enough about big tech companies let's talk about some companies that are planning to go ipo mm. earlier if a startup wanted to go public especially saas uh, the most preferred route was to list on nasdaq i mean we have seen when freshworks do that and that also seemed logical because for most companies us is the largest market uh but now that is changing india is becoming a hot destination but why is this happening is because the indian stock markets are now more welcoming to tech companies even those with 100 million dollars of annual revenue 20% ebitda margins and 30% growth these firms can now go public in india receive lots of press coverage and possibly get a 1 to 2 billion dollar valuation this however wouldn't happen in a market like us where firms need to show at least 300 million dollars in revenue for an ipo the valuation given to a tech company in indian stock markets at almost any revenue level might be higher than that in the us primarily because one indian retail investors are hungry for tech two many indian mutual funds have a mandate to invest a certain percentage of their assets in tech and three the number of public tech companies in india is low so does this mean you're going to see a lot more foreign tech companies list in india uh for starters i think we'll see a lot of indian tech companies <laughs> list in india uh, right see i am old enough to kind of remember make my trip listing in nasdaq hmm. uh, right way back when uh, and of course we all celebrated the freshworks ipo also um but man uh, the indian ipo markets are hungry uh, right they're hot and uh, obviously you know uh, people want to make the best of this right and we're seeing sort of a, a reverse flipping or a garwapsi as i called it mm-hmm. uh, happening right i mean all these folks who went and set up uh, base in singapore or delaware elsewhere uh, right for tax reasons uh, long term capital gains and esops and what not um, uh, are all uh, uh, you know moving back right in mean, mm-hmm. phone pay and the likes have all made the journey back uh, for multiple reasons right one is obviously um, if they are operating in something like fintech i mean sebi has a bunch of rules around mm. data protection and what not so they have to be here uh, the right and the second thing um, you know on uh, the ipo market itself right some of these large mature companies have to look at liquidity mm. um, right and uh, the indian ipo markets are uh, a pretty awesome right now right i mean we're giving like solid multiples compared to uh, the us i mean us you know i mentioned this earlier as well right i mean even like a really 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 good saas company uh, uh, you know is is trading maybe 6 7 times revenue at this point right mm-hmm. freshworks itself is perhaps like 4 or 5 times revenue uh, right so that being the case uh, yeah i mean you're going to see a lot more of this mm-hmm. for sure right i mean uh, companies focusing on india uh, retail uh, mm-hmm. investors uh, for sure right so also yeah. the indian stock markets are more shock proof right to global situation see all said and done we've been the best economy emerging from covid right we're mm-hmm. growing 7 8% um right and uh, you know inflation is also pretty controlled if that being the case i mean there's just a lot of appetite for growth here right um by all estimates of imf and you know whoever else you can think of hmm. india is going to steadily grow 7 8% maybe even 10 to 9 10% right over you know over the time of upcoming hmm. right so yeah all of that put together um makes for a fantastic uh, you know hmm. opportunity for these folks yeah well last week uh, go digit or digit general insurance made a quiet debut on the stock market on may 23 they listed for a price of 286 that's a premium of just 5.14% over the issue price but the ipo was sub- oversubscribed around 9.6 times now how do you think that you know the markets are going to react to a tech based insurance companies when there are a lot of other players like incumbents uh, present already there because the estimated uh, pe of, or fy26 stands at 49.6x for digit uh, this is a substantial premium in comparison to peers like icici lombard who have a pe of 29x and star health which yeah. has around 25x look you can't compare like icici lombard or uh, star health and so on with uh, digit right digit is a nascent business um, and people bet on potential the, the stock market like price is based on future returns 
right um, and the younger the company the more exciting the story i mean obviously it will be trading at a premium for sure right it's not an hul or whatever hmm. uh, hul trades at a premium but uh, uh, yeah i mean it's it's just that at the end of the day it's an insurance business with a, a tech slash consumer front end um right they will still have to you know manage their claims uh, you know underwrite uh, properly and so on and so forth uh, right and run a proper insurance business mm. um yeah so i am a customer of digit myself and i really really love their customer experience it's absolutely amazing uh, right so uh, maybe they will set the bar for um uh, some of these other conventional insurers uh, to catch up on that front right uh, because um, again insurance has perhaps the lowest nps across uh, any industry hmm. you know um so maybe this is what it is required you know i mean maybe like a customer focused digital um you know new age insurance uh, provider is what it will take for us to sort of up level on the insurance game hmm. also the insurance penetration in india is pretty low and like with the merging of more tech it's a company. huge 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 market right i mean you know most of the health expenses out of pocket right insurance penetration is less than 15% uh, and again if you slice that number into different ways of looking at it it's even more abysmal hmm. uh, right so yeah we need uh, you know insurance penetration to catch up for sure uh, hmm. right and uh, you know all of these folks uh, Uh, will will drive that you know mm-hmm. for sure uh, irdi um has to probably allow newer types of insurers to come into the market they've been like again very forward thinking as well um right so let's see let's see yeah. i mean it's an exciting time for sure well congratulations to the folks at digit and who are listening to our podcast and also congratulations to folks at urban company uh, the company just another fascinating segue huh? brilliant brilliant <laughs> guys <laughs> Gunjan sir is like uh, <laughs> killing it as a host today. Anyway, continuing. Speaking of killing it. <laughs> huh? A round of all the segues. Yeah. So Urban Company announced its fifth employee stock ownership plan sale program worth 203 crore rupees. It is the largest ESOP secondary sale which marked the participation of around 446 employees. till date urban company has granted esops to around 1600 employees and ex employees of the company and of these 784 employees have participated in five secondary esop sale programs liquidating esops worth 300 plus crore rupees now that's a lot of money that's more than 120 mm. crore on <laughs> pli <laughs> that's a lot for sure yeah no comment sir <laughs> no it's spread over a wide base i mean look esops man i mean like i like i've said right for the most part is just a pipe dream so i am mm-hmm. just so happy when it happens uh, you know even if it is to you know people we don't know about and yeah. people who will not give us parties absolutely mm-hmm. seriously man i mean come on what is it with you guys huh? flipkart what else flipkart Misho. urban company me show week fair none of these guys ever give us a party huh? yeah yeah man seriously when are we having our resource <laughs> we need new subscribers <laughs> we need new subscribers okay awesome uh well here is a quick round up of all the key fundraisers that went on last week sachin bansal's uh, navi fencer reportedly raised 150 crore rupees or 18 million dollars approximately through non convertible debentures fintech startup safe group raised 13 million dollars from incofin india progress fund and moj invest Tech startup Unify Apps raised 11 million dollars in a seed round led by Elevation Capital and rural focus f- financial services firm Dwara Kshetriya Gramin Financials raised 10 million dollars in debt from global impact investor Blue Orchard Microfinance Fund. So overall it seems like a pretty it's muted like a week fintech week basically. Yeah and also it's uh, in early stages and the check sizes are not yeah too high. Overall well I guess May has been kind of slow. Yeah. No, it's still uh, hard to raise a series B in this market for sure. Yeah. Hmm. So, our talk of the town section, we have this very interesting tweet by Vaibhav Dumkundwar. He's one of the managing partners at Better Capital. He tweets, "Indian hmm. founders are spending an unprecedented amount of time on events and podcasts, and he's not sure how they're measuring the outcomes and if it is the best way to f- spend a founder's time." He says, "Often the content is about their company instead of the users and problems they solve." and the roi is low because you're end of the day talking to more founders 
and not to people who would actually buy. So, Roshan, as a marketer and a podcaster, what are your thoughts on this? I think it's a straw man, honestly, right? I mean, you take anything, if you like look at a shitty example of doing something and then say that that whole thing is bad, I mean, you could make mm. the case for anything, right? I mean, events, uh, content, thought leadership, whatever it is, right? But yeah, but he does have a point about not doing podcasts well, right? I mean, if you're a new company and pioneering uh, like a completely different category and a new way of doing things and so on, I mean, are you going to wait for, uh, you know, traditional press and media and so on to kind of pick up whatever uh, cool, awesome things you're doing? Or are you going to like define your own narrative through all these cell phone assets, right? I mean, you're going to do it through this, right? And uh, even just very, very tactically, a podcast is at least one or two blogs, right? Three or four snippets, uh, videos, reels, and so on and so forth. It can be repurposed like 20 different ways, yeah. um, right? And uh, at a shoestring budget, you know? And so so I, I don't see how it is... Uh, uh, how at all how it is bad at all for founders to sort of invest in that um, honestly so I, I think it's a it's a great opportunity and uh, it depends on how you use it uh, right I mean th there's also all of this self-promotional stuff that happens um, you know which we tend to avoid on the startup operator obviously right mm. um, we're very clear that you know the the podcast focuses on insights around execution uh, right. So we want to hear stories on how people do X or Y things. Right. How do they uh, go from zero to a million dollars in sales or how do they solve for compliance in fintech and so on and so forth. Right. Tactical uh, stuff uh, that can be actually useful uh, very, very practically for uh, our startup operator, yeah. Janta. Right. So, so also another thing which I called out, right, of talking to end customers, I don't think that is the only audience you want to reach through podcasts no, or you, through marketing. You call general. your customers on the podcast, right? Yeah. So you call your prospects and customers on the podcast. Like, for instance, let's say I'm selling to CTOs, right? Um, what a fantastic medium to sort of talk to CTOs, right? Line up seven or eight prospect CTOs hmm. and engage in a wonderful one and a half hour conversation, two hour conversation with them. And uh, they will be happy to come on to that conversation as well, right? Rather than like attend a prospect hmm. call or a demo or whatnot. Uh, so it's really about how you use the medium for sure, right? I've seen it pay very rich dividends for a lot of the companies, uh, Vimo included, right? Um, uh, it can actually, I mean, beyond just like brand and whatnot, it can actually generate like hard pipeline, I feel. Yeah. Awesome. That's so interesting. Pick. Yeah. Intense. Wrap. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, thanks for staying with us right till the end. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. Before we sign off, just a quick reminder to like this video, share with your friends and family, and let us know your opinions on any of the topics we discussed today in the comments below. Specifically, if we should like have a More moratorium AI. on AI, right? Yeah. I mean, not talk about AI for at least maybe eight episodes or something. It has like become like those Baiju's news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, awesome. Do all the good stuff. Rate, review, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you again next week with more exciting news. Bye, Take guys. Take care. Have a great week.